Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to walk you through how I build these induction heaters. For those unaware, the coil is not hot itself, but you can still heat up magnetic and conductive objects really quickly. It took about 30 seconds for this fork to get molten red hot, which is honestly incredible considering these are on Amazon for pretty cheap. I'll walk through the science at the end of the video, but let's get to the build. So here's the supplies you're going to need. The coil comes separate from the module when you buy it on Amazon, so you need to add solder to the base. I have actually adjusted the size of this coil because I wanted to fit a larger test tube, but they normally come just like this, and it's completely fine to leave it like that. When you make it larger, it's also less strong, but if you did want to do it, you got to unwind the coil like this. It's pretty flexible wire, and then wrap it around your test tube or finger or whatever you want until you get the desired shape. Connect the power supply to the device. I'm using this female jack. It already has a red and black wire coming out of it that I can easily attach to these screw terminals. Positive is red and negative is black. But if you don't already know that, you probably shouldn't be making it. What's nice about using this plug instead of just alligator clips is that it fits super snugly and you don't have to worry about the connections coming loose. This next part where I make a wood structure for it is not necessary, but if you're planning to move your device around a lot, I would personally recommend it. You don't want to be tugging on the wire ends that go to the screw terminals. So I basically use super glue to glue the plastic bottom to the wood baseboard, made sure everything can fit nicely. When you're using the module, it does tend to get hot, so you do want to let it breathe a little bit. You don't want to completely enclose it. So I, I added two wood sides and then one top piece of wood. Before I can glue that on though, I need to make a hole for the female jack. After eyeballing it, I selected the 3 8 inch drill bit and it worked out pretty good. So you drill the hole, insert your wires, and then you press fit the jack connector into it. I kind of got one or two threads under the wood and then I found that it was really secure. I tested it with the power supply, unplugged of course. And then just to make sure it's secure, I tried to pull it out and it would not come out. So press fit works pretty good even if it's by hand. Next thing you want to do is open up the screw terminal so you can fit these in. If you notice, I added solder to the ends just because when they're thready and strandy, they, they won't make a good connection. Then you screw it down tight and then make sure that they're not loose and they won't come out with a slight tug or so. Now all your connections are pretty good to go. You just need to glue down your top wood piece. I'm using wood glue here. I never mentioned it, but I think that's probably pretty obvious. I always seem to add a little too much wood glue, so I have to wipe it off with my fingers. Probably not great for my health, but oh well. Once the wood glue dries, you plug in the power supply, you see the light turns on, then you plug in your jack adapter, you see the blue LED on the module, now you know you're ready to go. Now's a good time to point out that all these materials are available in the description to this video, or on the Medium article I wrote, or on my website. But anyway, here I am boiling water with a bolt. You can see all the bubbles are coming from the bolt and so this is telling you that the coil's not hot and the heat is actually coming from the bolt itself but we'll get into that in a second. I wanted to show you a few more demos just because I think they're really cool. I couldn't fit the whole marshmallow inside the coil so I just took out some of the insides and the marshmallow doesn't seem to like this. It pretty much disappears or burns off entirely. Even if you don't plan to make one of these, let me know in the comments if you want me to try cutting through something or try putting something in, and I'll let you know if I can make it happen. Here's a final demo before we get to the science, and it's lighting a match just with the heat. Let's talk about why this is happening. Basically from Ampere's Law, we know that if we send a current through a coil, it'll produce a magnetic field with a certain polarity. So in this orientation, we have the north and south poles labeled accordingly. People are more comfortable with magnets, so I'm going to simplify this model and just draw a magnet with its given polarity. I'll even draw an arrow pointing to the right. We switch the positive and negative terminals coming from our power supply, current is going to flow through the coil in a different direction. Because the current is now flowing in the opposite direction, the magnetic field is also oriented in the opposite direction. So I'll draw a magnet with a north and south pole labeled appropriately and an arrow pointing to the left. These are the two conditions we create when we use alternating current. We're constantly switching back and forth between the two magnetic fields, or we're constantly changing the magnetic field. Now we understand what's happening on the coil side, let's see what happens when we introduce a metal object. When a metal object is conductive, it has free electrons on the surface that are ready to move. So if you place this inside the magnetic field, its free electrons are going to want to move in that direction. 
This movement or flow of electrons is called current, or in our case, eddy current. Once the metal's magnetic field aligns with that of the magnet, the current flow will stop. So, in order to keep the current flow going, you're going to reverse the polarity of the magnet. The electrons will want to move again in the opposite direction, which will produce more current. This is why AC current is so fundamental to induction heating. The electrons move back and forth. No matter what object you use, there's some form of resistance, so if you have that current in a resistance, it's going to create heat. This is why you can't have induction cooling, as many people have commented. No matter which way the electrons are flowing, it produces heat. Let's look at this a little bit more visually. We have our positive and negative terminals, which are constantly flipping back and forth with AC current. So the polarity of the magnetic field is also up and down. When we insert our object, the free electrons on the object are going to move rapidly up and down, which will produce heat. So on a high level recap, we need high frequency AC current to move those electrons rapidly. We need the material to be conductive so it has free electrons. And lastly, the stronger the magnetic field, the quicker it heats. You want a magnetic field on the object so that the magnetic field of the object opposes that of the coils and things happen more rapidly. A weak electric field means that the heating will occur more slowly and a strong one means it will heat faster. So the best objects for induction heating are usually ferrous metals. One final way to think about this is if we look at how the energy is being converted. We first start off with electricity at 12 volts and a max of 10 amps from our power supply. That's 120 watts of power maximum. We're using this electricity to make a magnetic field. And this occurs based off Ampere's law. And we're sending AC current into a coil. So this is the coil side. The magnetic field of the coil actually interacts with the magnetic field of the object. It's kind of like Newton's second law. If one magnetic field changes, so will the other in the opposite direction. So it's interacting even though it's through the air. So this one changes, this one changes as well. Now once the magnetic field of the object is changing, this is going to get converted back into electricity by inducing a voltage which induces a current inside the object. This is Lenz's law or Faraday's law and it's kind of the reverse Ampere's law. Now we've converted the power back to electricity in the form of eddy currents, which as a reminder are small currents within the material. Now I guess one last thing to add is that this electricity through resistance produces the heat that we are looking for. So there you have it, there's my best attempt to explain what's going on when we use our induction heater. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and send this video to your friends. It really means a lot. If you're interested in building this and have thought the video wasn't enough, I also laid out the details in an article on Medium. I linked that in the description. Thanks for watching.